Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. Hi. I'm Patty. And I'm Carrie. Ta-da! <laughs> we pass the test. We know our names. <laughs> we, we practice this really hard. Welcome to Studio R12 Stencils Live Q&A. Yes. We are live every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern yep. on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for your patience today. We had some technical difficulties, but we are here. Yes, and everybody send Steve hearts because his heart was doing this. <laughs> He was in a little least. bit of a panic today. To say the least. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so we're good. We're good. Um, but yeah, so welcome. Um, if you're catching us on Facebook, be sure to um, like, comment, and share if you're on YouTube. Because we have prizes. We do have prizes. Yes. Wherever you are, please comment and ask questions. Yes. Um, if you're on YouTube, be sure to subscribe so that you will be notified anytime that we go live or add new videos. We have some amazing we have some amazing stuff amazing guys we're, we're like soon. so excited what we're gonna do today started a whole entire project series mm -hmm. and we're not gonna tell and you can bribe me and sometimes I do spill the beans but Jeez, I'm gonna try yes. to be like zip, zip, throw away the key for <laughs> a couple of weeks um, yes so it's we, exciting we have some fun stuff planned for you um on our YouTube channel last week, we covered crackle and crackle and crackle and crackle and all the things crackle. We so, but but all the things crackle except for we just used one medium mm -hmm. and um, the most common medium that you can get um, on in all those <coughs> stores and stuff like that. So this is Deco Arts weathered wood, and it, it, I'm going to be doing more on other crackle mediums mm -hmm. because there's different looks for all the things, including just in Deco Arts line. There's like twelve or maybe there's 30, I don't know, but um, there's a lot. Yeah. And then every paint manufacturer has a different look and a different thing. We're gonna do some stuff with glue, if you're excited about learning that. Um, that's really hard, by the way. Um, and if you have tricks for me, um, I haven't always been able to do that well. So if you have ideas and thoughts for me, I would love to have some pointers. Yeah. Um, but this is like so fun to do and it makes such an interesting background. Absolutely. So this is kind of what started this. So this video mm -hmm. from last week, which I'll share a link, is going to be all the tips and tricks on how to do it, how not to do it, the do's and don'ts and all of that stuff. Yeah, all the mistakes that people have made. Um, I taught, so for those of you that don't know, I used to teach um, internationally um, throughout, you know, the kingdom of DIY people. And, um, and that gave me such insight to what problems people have when they're trying to use mediums and paints and brushes and all of that so i'd i'd be the teacher that they hired and i'd be like i don't have any idea why you can't use that brush and i'd had to um through fire just learn how to show people how to do the thing so when you see me pulling things apart and um being like well maybe you're holding the brush wrong or this is why this does this that's my thinking process is all those years of teaching and training Absolutely. and then watching other professional teachers paint and learning from them as well. And so then that crackle led to a new series that mm -hmm. we wanted to show you guys yeah. where we have over the next three weeks, we're going to release snippets of part one, part two, part three on how to do an entire crackle project. Yeah. So the finished project is our amazing farm fresh <laughs> eggs Forward. There you go. with the crackle. Um, so part one is coming this weekend yeah. and we are going to dive deep into how to apply the crackle mm -hmm. medium yep. and the paint on top of it. Yeah, and if you want to know all the ins and outs, don't drop that for a second. So this, when week one is going to be our crackle and then we're going to go into the next week and we're going to talk about how to use stencil detail around it and some distressing and antiquing and stuff. So, yeah, so yeah. week one is the, this. Yeah, week, two, week two is crackle okay. and distressing. Okay, cool. And then week three is going to be the stenciling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the stenciling has this ombre. Learn how to do ombre. It's so cool. So in a couple of weeks, you'll have that lesson. Mm -hmm. We thought it would be cool to, to take and make some smaller nuggets. Like I watch a lot of YouTube when my husband's watching golf or football mm -hmm. because I don't. Yay, sports. Yay. <laughs> five sons. Okay, I need some hearts from all the mothers of sons because like five sons, oh my gosh. And I love them, but holy moly, I'm sported out. Um, but, and we also show you how to do this drop shadow and some of the detailed um, decorating your letters. So it's going to be a really fun little series and then you can consume it in little 
little bites instead yeah. of having to go back to it and come find it later. And then, so on that note, if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is where this will be posted, um, and then you ring the bell, it will say, you'll get like a little flash message that says, hey, these guys just did this thing. And if you want to see it, you go and see it. If you don't want to see it, you'd be like, watch later. Right. You know, so it's not like threatening your inbox or any of that kind of stuff. It's just like a cute little pop-up message on your phone. Yeah. So. so yeah, so that is Yay. what we have from um, last week and, and this coming week. I want to point out, if you guys scroll around on our homepage and go look at what Darlia posted, we have some really cute images mm -hmm. that were posted on the community. On the community, community tab. Part. So we sent out our stickers um, to the people who were in on that promotion. And so they've been getting them and they've been sharing where they are putting them. And Darlia just... Shout out to Darlia. Um, she's getting the DIY Stencil Fan of the Day Award. Yes. Because, I, oh my golly. Yeah, she used one of our stencils and our sticker and she painted, painted her computer. Painted her computer. Like, um, it's... Yeah, so cool. it's, it's adorable. It's just cute. It's, it's all heck. Cute. Thank you, Darlia. Yes. Hearts to you. Yes. Um, so I think let's get started. Okay. So guys, today we are, first of all, um, let us know while we're setting it up. What's in your tumbler today at lunch? Um, we might be both drinking wine. Steve was having a heart attack. We had, no, just, we were drinking wine before Steve had the heart attack. <laughs> okay. So we are going to be talking about layering stencils. So Many, many times you will be like, oh, I have this hole that is a deer. How could I dress that up? And there's a big, big trend in putting something behind something else. So you could do like a mountain scene behind the deer. You could do, you know, the uh, buffalo check behind the deer. You could do whatever. So today I'm going to show you how to layer your stencils. I'm going to blow some hippie noodles today. And what I really want you to know, and this is... Um, going to be on this red board and I've got it kind of marked when you have a stencil that doesn't fit something um, and I've got this this is kind of a little bit random but it's kind of a really big trend um, so we've got a United States map and we're going to paint that in the middle and then once we started doing that we were like well what could we put through it then we were like stars and then it became a whole patriotic project and that is what's going to be in a couple of weeks i think like four weeks um I, it'll be next Ish. month yeah so it'll be in time for you guys to get it done for summer if you want to paint that but like this obviously doesn't fit so the lesson here today is that you don't have to paint on a board that is exactly this size okay so that is really important you could have boards that were put together you could have boards that were pine you can have we use mdf um and do we have all these listed yet on the webs on R12? All the surfaces? All the, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. So we have like uh, so A many lot. shapes and sizes of mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. So um, anyway, so when you are going to put this here, what we did is we kind of laid it out. We had this plus this and we laid it all out. I can't show you all the pieces yet because it's a surprise, but I marked it with my ghost writer and um, that is a soapstone that will just erase if I, you know, spit right there, but we um, are practicing um, being more tidy than that <laughs> lately in the last two years. Not sharing stuff. Not sharing stuff, yeah. If this was mine and I was at home, I'd totally like, do it. But if you're sharing with Carrie and other painters in the building, you don't want to be spitting on the stuff. Hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to lay this out. I've got it marked down here and I had it marked up there and then I erased it. But that Soapstone, it, it's got a black lead, a white lead, and a roller ball that doesn't have any ink in it. So if you're tracing a pattern or doing any of that stuff, it will glide on your tracing paper without um, leaving a mark and stuff like that. And it glides really well. So sometimes your pens, I don't know what makes that happen, um, but the pens catch. <coughs> So it makes it sometimes they tear the tracing paper. So this does not tear the tracing paper if you need to trace. And on the back end, it has an eraser. So you could also just erase your line with the eraser. Like <laughs> spit. So, I'm old school. My mom used to. Uh, Jarita said spit shine is the yes, best. Yes, it's the best. It really is. Okay, so we're going to use my T square to make sure that I get this straight. Bring in the glasses. And I've got this. Adhesed with the um, stick and restick, and I got to tell you guys, you really are 
fan, so that's sticking to my hand, but there's no residual stickiness, and that will stay sticky even after you wash it. If you wanna take the sticky away, then you use like rubbing alcohol from the store, and that will take the sticky away. Um, like put it on a piece of like wax paper and then just um, gently, gently because folded stencils are broken stencils. So you don't wanna be rough with your stencils, always be gentle. Anyway, so I'm gonna use my T-square. I've got this line where I know I want approximately to have things. The T-square keeps, it has this level and it has this little, um, Rusty, I don't know if you could get this, but it has this piece that's extra and it has an edge right there. So it hugs right on your board. Like you almost can't jack this up. So that is a big benefit for me. And then the nice soapstone makes a really nice light mark. And the neat thing about using the soapstone is you can um, take it off with water, eraser, all the things. Okay, spit. All right, so I'm going to lay that there. And I've got the stick and restick on the backside because of all this fragile bits. And I'll just rub that down. And now that's not going anywhere. Um, the stick and restick, you guys have been huge stencil fans. <laughs> what? Well, we, yeah. that's what I was getting ready to say. Like, um, you liked it a lot more than we expected. <laughs> yeah, so we ordered it in and you sold it out. Yeah. <laughs> so Carrie's going to put an Amazon link to that mm -hmm. um, so that you can get that still on Amazon if you want to go ahead and, you know, get excited about that right now. I always hate it when, like, I'm that kid, you know, like, you can have it, but you can have it on Tuesday and I'll be like, but I want it yes. now, you know, so always been that kid. Um, Donna asked if you can use the stick and restick. Um, to put gold foil on your with. yeah yeah I think that's that's what started it um yes and I think and she asked specifically about the bee stencil Donna I'm going to share that video I did on the bee stencil yeah. nope, different um, bee stencil yeah. and yes we use the stick and restick and I show exactly how to do that yeah. on that video yeah and what happened with this stick and restick I used to use a tack it over and over product and um, it was extremely tacky you almost had to like you know do the thing like you do with tape where you put it on your jeans so it would like take the lint off your jeans so it wouldn't be so sticky um, and my stencils used to lay together and they used to like meld and make themselves into a giant pile of plastic and I can show you here this is the same ever-growing pile of stencils that we keep showing you guys and in here I've got some stick and restick on the tea towel stripes and it's not sticking to the next stencil at all. And then this guy right here, this has got a lot of big, I call them arm traps, head traps almost, um, a lot of loose bits, but um, it's got stick and restick on the back of it and it's got the tape. It might just have the tape, actually it's in rows. This has got the tape, also a good product. And let me see if I can find that. That one might still be on our website. Okay, so what I like about this is you can make it in nice even rows and it's super portable. What I like about this, and I feel like I just jumped over a whole like border. I'm going to get back to why this got started. Um, but what I like about this is it's like the same amount of plastic waste, but you can like, it's like a lot of medium. This is a little bit less, so it's not quite as efficient for your dollars. Um, the crafter's tape is in stock. Okay, the crafters tape, tape is in stock on our website. And then the reason we started this is I went to Columbus, so we live in Southeast Ohio. Um, we have no crafting except us here in Southeast Ohio. Um, but we went, I went up to Columbus and I went to every Joann's, every Hobby Lobby, every Michael's, every store that I could get to that had craft supplies. And I bought every foiling medium that I could find. And um, a sticky and a re-sticky medium. And then this was our winner. This was the second place. This one is the foiling glue. But the stick and re-stick is just a better name for what we use it for. So you could use this for foil. You can use this for foil. You can use this to stick and re-stick. They might even be the same product. Um, sometimes manufacturers do that. They, um, they relabel things um, to be more friendly. Anyway, but these products do not make a giant lump of plastic, so you're safe to keep them all stored together. Okay. Um, I, I'm not, I'm going to say this wrong. I'm going to drink. Um, we have a, we have a new viewer on Facebook who's joining us or on YouTube who's joining us live for the first time. Um, I'm just going to need you to 
to message me and tell me how to say your name. Um, but she said that she's addicted to our videos and her yeah. husband thinks that she joined a stencil cult. So, <laughs> so our next sticker is going to have to be, I joined a stencil cult. Oh my God, somebody write that down. Yeah. Oh, that is so good. Tell your husband thank you. I joined a stencil cult. <laughs> that is the best. Holy moly. Okay, so laughter is medicine. And I have to say that when we do these things on Tuesdays, we're laughing beforehand. Steve's stressing out. <laughs> Most nice and now he's laughing. Today, he's yeah. laughing. Rusty's usually laughing at us. And, um, and we just really do have a very good time. And then you guys hop on when, we, when we're live. And it's great. Like, I love it. I love it. Okay, let's paint. So I'm going to use a mix of colors. And I'm going to talk about like why I mix these two things together. Um, obviously, if I'm going for a patriotic theme, um, I'm going to probably do red, white, and blue for the United States people. Um, and I don't think that we're going to have any Canada takers on this particular project. Sorry, Canada. Um, but we have a... Like, well, but it's a, just a good lesson in general. Yeah, it's a good lesson. Yeah, the lesson is there, but I wonder if we could do a leaf with something for them or something that would be kind of cool. Anyway, um, but so I wanted a denim-y blue, um, but this is going to be too dark. When I sit it down next to this um, color, um, if you squint at it, and all of you guys there in live land, um, go ahead and like squint at this, and you'll notice that the blue kind of disappears on the red. Okay, so that's how I do a lot of my testing of things. I walk around like Magoo and just squint at things. So if it's too dark, it's going to be the same color. So our contrast isn't going to be there. If I used white with this, it would kind of become a sky blue or a baby blue. Um, we got bluebirds and things flying around right now. I'm so like excited about the weather. Tell us what your weather's doing. Um, but I'm going to mix it with a gray instead so basically a gray is like a lighter blue um, or a lighter black and so it won't be so shocking and when you're mixing colors so this the reason these lessons are so valuable is not just because carrie and i are crazy but um it's because um we like tell you so many little snippets of tricks and tools and things like that that you can do so um all right so i'm going to use an offset palette knife that means that it has this little raised edge if you've ever frosted a cake with a flat um, cake decorating knife, um, spatula thing, um, you, you run your fingers right through the frosting. So when you have an offset one, it keeps your fingers lifted up so you don't run your hands through the other paint that's on your board right now. So when you're mixing paint, you always want to take your light color and you want to mix a little bit of your dark color into it. Okay, and now in this case, I'm trying to lighten my dark, so I'm gonna pull my dark. I'm gonna mix a little bit of my light into my dark because the dark's gonna take over. But when, one time I was mixing paint and I needed some middle color of something. And I made, and I had a big giant paper plate and the whole thing was like filled heaping with paint because I kept adding like the, light into the dark and I couldn't get it light enough. So then once I got a new plate and put the light in there and then put the dark into it, then I just had a nice little bit of paint. Such a good lesson. Such a good lesson. Um, Such a good lesson. So I have to share this from Sharon. Um, Sharon um, noticed and loves your new haircut. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you guys, I was desperate. We, we, we had lots of talks about hair in the past. Yes, we had complete counseling. Like it was a uh, we we've done a lot of hair chats. Um, we've had intervention. Kelly said that she's noticed it as well. Um, and then on YouTube, our new our new viewer, she um, hey. phonetically spelled out her name. It's Lemurith. Lemurith. Yeah, that that's is, a great yeah, name. very cool. Yeah. Um, and then Deb I'm said, Lemurith, stand up, say your name, admit you're a stencilholic. <laughs> Admission <laughs> is the beginning of tackling your problem. There is no cure, sorry, but you're not alone. <laughs> you guys are on it. I want to know what's in those today. tumblers yes. today. <laughs> that is so amazing. Okay, so we're going to take a dome brush. And um, I did want to, I said we were going to paint, but we're just going to talk for just a hot second. Um, just wanted to share a kind of really cool thing. Um... This is one of our buckets of dome brushes. Um, and this is, we, we might have a bigger problem than, and I yes. can't yes. say Lemur. the name. I need a visual yeah. for that. But um, we may have a problem. But this is our dry brushes, and we have um, a couple other buckets of them. And then 
This is what we do once we, and there's a video for how to wash your brushes. Um, this is what we do. We take just this, I'm gonna put that there, and then this is how we just dry it. We take, you know, the brushes, we throw them into a container, and then every couple of days, once they finally dry, then we put them into this um, dish basin. And then I wanna say this roller has been in here for like a week, and the darn thing has still got a, a wet core to it. So one, like I love rollers and stencils, but <sighs> once you wash them, they are difficult to um, deal with. But once everything's dry, then we refill the buckets and that's like our little system. I thought that would be interesting. Okay, so we're gonna take our dome brush. The dome brush is made, and if you guys love the dome brushes, please share. This is our community, you know, and you guys, um, just as we just saw, um, our good support for each other and all of that. So um, make sure you share what you love. If you don't love, like whatever, like I'm good with it. But they're cut in a dome over the top. And so when you push it down, it doesn't splay out. Okay, so and this is not a dome brush or a stencil brush, but it's cut like one. When you push on this one, see those bristles like scoot under? So if you've ever had paint bleed under your stencils, one of the reasons is because of the cut of the brush. And this is, I don't know why this has never caught on. It's magic, it just works. So um, if you think that you have a little bit of a problem bleeding under, then you need to make sure that you have the right brush. Next thing that people tend to do, and while I'm just getting that base, is they tend to kind of like scoop and you know, ooh, gooey, that's too much paint. So I'm gonna dry it off on my paper towel. And we learned from Abby in her um, Zodiac video, we learned that she does it in a line instead of in a circle. And it seems like you can get more use out of your paper towel that way. So then we go on here and we're light pressure. So the brush is dry. It's a dome brush. We scoop it, but we scrape it off on the paper towel. You always offload. Whatever you're doing, you always offload. And then we swirl with light pressure. So now because I've got that um, stick and re-stick on here, this stencil's not moving at all. So I'm gonna just go there. So while you are painting and doing the thing, you might be like, well, what would I put in there? And you might have, you know, I'm gonna use stars today because it's, you know, red, white, and blue stars. But you might have stencils that you don't use. For, I should be painting and talking. Please, please continue painting. <laughs> please paint, <laughs> Patty. <laughs> Yeah, and then look at how fast, um, just skipping to the I am actually painting, um, squirrel. <laughs> We're going to need a zapper. We're I have, um, zapper. we have a um, theme in our, country, in our company that um, we're all a giant bunch of squirrels at a rave. So, um, yeah. Most mm -hmm. of us are giant squirrels. <laughs> okay, so I'm the, big, I'm the queen squirrel. <laughs> However, we're definitely all nuts. <laughs> we definitely are. We definitely are. Um, I'm going to do a giveaway. Yes. Um, so I already did a giveaway on YouTube for Lemurith because since she's going to be going to stencil rehab soon, we thought that we would just help her out. Um, our next one is going to Lisa Becker on Facebook. And Lisa is going to get a mistletoe and hot cocoa stencil. Um, Lisa said that she needs our bucket of brushes. No doubt. So, <laughs> no doubt. so everyone's loving the B.O.B. they're calling it, the bucket of brushes. Um, but Lisa, we will message you and get uh, your Lisa, B-Y-O-B, okay? Yes. Bring your own brush. <laughs> Bring your own bucket. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, this is probably, you guys are the best. That's awesome. Okay, so, um, what we did though is we took stencils that we've already used, stencils we have in our little, um, you know, this is, we've got hearts and checks and all the things. We can do stars that are in a line. We have stars that are here. We have stars that are the right size that we thought we'd like. Um, lots of stars, but I'm going to show you how to use part of your stencil to do the decorating because sometimes you just have, um, you want to have a detail, but I don't have the right stencil. Well, sometimes you have part of a right stencil. So in this, project we're going to show you how to combine um, part of a different stencil with part of a different stencil i'm trying not to say the words to give it away mm -hmm. Shh. yes yeah. yes don't talk about it anyway so i'm going to show you how to use part of a stencil to make um a whole project and darlia said um you could use your you could do your state in a different color and that would oh, be really good just to do with like the heart your even? State, the little yeah heart. and we also one of the reasons that we made these 
was because we thought about if you're big into travel. That travel trailers could, and campers. Yep, and, and you could paint in each state as you go to each state or do some different things with it. So I love the idea of doing your state in a different color. Yeah, my daughter-in-law um, bought a travel trailer and then Ted and I bought a travel trailer last year. Um, it just happened. We'd wanted one forever and didn't want to pay a new price and um, like a little bit prayed. And um, there on the end of my road was a travel trailer sitting in the middle of a field. And um, they had just done such a good job. It's like 20 years old. And they did such a good job of upkeeping it and everything. And we've taken it out like five times and had yeah. the best time. But my daughter-in-law was like, let's put it on, you know, the outside of it. And we'll just, you know, keep up with it that way where we camped mm -hmm. and all that. But you could do it just for travel. Like I've almost lived in all of the states. I've moved so much in my life, but well, it can be such a great learning tool with kids yeah. and chalk. How many I mean, you could yeah. chalk it in oh, and so review the states. Good idea. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna peek. So we're not gonna take this off because I don't want to realign this. Um, but it's stuck, so we can definitely peek. Look how cute that is. Oh, yeah. That's okay, pretty. that's really nice. Now I could also take it and I could dirty brush dip my dirty load my brush into the dark blue. And I could give it a little bit of shape and form so I could fade it at the edges. Just barely doing a thing. Just to, just to give it a little framing. Okay. Yeah. And that gives it a little bit of dimension. And then brush always goes in the water. Um, if you don't put your brush, let me see. I'm sure there's got to be one. We're actually really good about washing our brushes here. Um, at our shop here in town, um, sometimes those brush. Oh, ha! <laughs> the bucket. The bucket. Okay, so we like the smaller buckets. We just get these from like Home Depot or whatever. Um, I love it without names all over it. Carrie wanted the smaller bucket today, so she. So listen, I like the smaller bucket because with the big bucket that Patty's using, when you put the foam brush in it, they don't stay. They under. don't stay this mm -hmm. way, and they just lay down, and then the handle. The handle gets gross. <laughs> Do that again. <laughs> Makes me gag. It gets all like this. Ew. And, and then the top of your brush, it gets yeah. yucky because it's not wet. So I love the two and a half quart bucket because it's tiny and it just stays. But I went to get it yesterday. Can I see it, please? Yes. Yeah, I went to get it yesterday and this is, <laughs> this is what happened. I, <laughs> I picked it up by the handle. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> Who was responsible for this? <laughs> it's, got, it's, uh, it's someone, it's someone bad. painted with it and did not clean it out. And, and then it stayed in a corner for like three yeah. weeks. And so we have a, a prepping station that's got a couple of tables on the outside of this wall in the, stu in the studio. And yeah, yeah it, so it just did on, not. We're looking for, for just, more small bucket so yeah we won't be well we could make that we could fix we steve, can make it steve ever the optimist was like we could fix that and i was like that's a dollar fifty yeah. it's going in the trash ah <laughs> oh, he's yeah. like i'll take your dollar fifty i'm cleaning this bucket <laughs> all right we're gonna get back to painting guys we're gonna okay so i spit out the white paint over here and looking at how dark this is i'm looking at how dark that is oh and i do want to say so i don't know if you noticed um let me get it da, da, da. The evil loose hair of doom. Okay, so I want to clarify. These bristle brushes are made out of bristles. They have a half inch or three quarter inch ferrule, um, and there are a million hairs stuck inside of there. They glom them in the glue, and then they stuff them in the thing, and then they, I'm sure they have some sort of pressing thing. Actually, I've never seen them made. I've seen other brushes made, but not these. Um, and they they do lose their hairs when you first get these you're going to have some shedding that's going to go on so once you clean them a few times and stuff like that that all settles down you will get a stray hair so that is true for this brush that is true for every brush that does this kind of work that i've ever ever had these little guys for dry brushing um, do the same thing it's going to be true for not your tacklon brushes not your fine artist brushes and stuff but these that are more natural fibers tend to shed so just know that and then what I do when they do that, if, if I'm dry, I just brush it off. If it's still wet, I leave it until it's dry and then I'll like pick it off. If you have a little bit of raised paint around it, 
You can use a light sanding um, once you take your stencil away. Lightly sand it just to take the texture away. So that's how you handle that if you get that. Everybody that's bought these brushes will have had stray hairs. Every mm -hmm. single person. So just know that that is a thing. It does not make the brush bleed under though. Okay, and that's what we want this brush for. Okay, so this is my star stencil and my star stencil has some, st some stars that are too big. And it, we literally, we were planning this project out and we were talking about which stencil we should get um, and have cut for us and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, you know, this is such a good question because if these are too big on this stencil, but these are too small on that stencil, but you're at home and you don't have a stencil manufacturing company on the other side of your building, like you don't have all those lasers running, you know, um, all the time. So what do you do when you're at home um, and how do you handle that? So I'm going to show you what I would do if it were me um, and I didn't have, you know, that all that stuff. I'm going to go into a creamy color paint. Okay, and wait one second, I have a yeah. question for you. Um, how are you deciding which way your stencil is going to go? Um, so I'm not, actually. Okay. Um, I am literally like laying it over. Gotcha. It. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to not use the really big stencil, the big, big stars. Okay, so I'm, but this area right here in the middle has a lot of medium little stars. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to use that. And if, But if I turn a star that way... Or turn a star that way. If you like it one way or the other, just choose okay. that. Can I have you hand me the the deer one? Um, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna I'll talk about that for a second while yes. you're starting. Um, and the stencils, please. Okay. Yeah. And I'll talk about that for a second while you're starting that. So, with this, when we were talking about all the it. different things that we were gonna do, so we painted the deer first on this project, and we painted the deer in um, red, and we chose to do red first on this because it's easier to paint dark over light. So um, in this instance, we decided, well, yeah, we don't really want to paint black because then painting red over black, you're going to have to paint white and then paint red over it or paint gray and then red over it. But with this, when you are putting your pattern stencil over top, you are going to want to either label your stencil with a Sharpie marker and say top, bottom, however you want to do it, or... Do mark your stencil. Yeah. This has screwed me up so many times. Yes. I've had to have Dustin come and get his computer and then take the pattern and match it to the thing. And then, because you can go this, you can go four ways this way, and then plus you and can the reverse it and right. do the other way. Oh. So one thing that we do is on the very bottom of our stencils, typically in the right hand corner, we do a light etching that tells what the skew is of the stencil. So if you want it that way, then just make sure you know where your skew is and that you always put it in that way because otherwise yeah. you can get in a pickle. Yeah, yeah it, it, it not matching I, up. I cannot. I've done it with that stencil and I've done it, um, trying to think. We um, did it on a project. Oh, God. Yeah, whatever it was, it was bad. Um, I want to show a couple of things. Yeah. So um, what we've done with that one and with this one is you use the stencil that you already stenciled and mm -hmm. you use that as the mask. So I'm stenciling on top of the stencil and the stencil is preventing my light color from going through my dark color and it's going right over the top of it and when I lift it, it will only be like this overlaid stuff. Now I don't have mine taped and I think I am gonna, I'm gonna go grab tape. something while you're talking. I so, have a so I'm gonna just give this a piece of tape. Normally I tape with two pieces, but I just want it to not slide. And I'm only wanting these little ones. And I wanna see what do I have? What, what's the effect I've got? And I, I like that. So now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna slide over. And I wanna be careful. So our stencils are cloudy. They're not completely see-through, but I can see all of my stars. And so when I'm laying over the next one, I want to make sure that I don't do that star next to that little star that I can see under there. So I don't need to move it. I just need to not stencil that star, if that makes sense. So this is just such a neat lesson because it really makes stenciling um, just addictive. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's infinite possibilities, which yeah. is why we love stencils. So... Patty's talking about leaving that one down as a mask. So I want to show you guys a boo-boo that I made the first time that I was doing this with a stencil. So in the video that I did where you the wrapping were paper one, doing right? the wrapping yeah. paper, 
I wanted to do this and I did the K and I love the K and then I decided I wanted to stencil a little check inside of it but what I didn't do was I didn't leave the K down when I started to stencil and so then it got a couple little ghosting points over here and you really can't fix it when it's on paper so paper, yeah. in the video we just popped a big bow over it and it was fine but you will want to leave your base stencil down while you are doing that other so that you do have the mask. Yeah, and then Carrie, what I'm doing right now is I am literally deciding. And so see these three stencils that kind of go in a row? I would not want to do only those three like going up the mm -hmm. East Coast because that's going to look super patterny. So what I'll do instead is I'll be like, you're a smaller state. Let me give you a smaller star. Not because you're less important, just because you're diminutive. Okay, and then we might go over here and then randomly place the corner of a star in another New England state. And that now I'm using my um, stars individually. You're gonna probably wanna make sure every state gets a little bit of a star, just to mm -hmm. be fair. Um, uh, that's gonna be a lot of stars. Never mind, everybody and doesn't get a star. We are not painting 50 stars today. We are not we get the doing point. it. No. Uh, <coughs> Pat asked, you aren't smearing the first group of stars. So no, we Because it dries them. immediately. Once yes. you're using this dry brush with the dry paint, with the wiped off, it's dry. Like I, if I do a big old lettering thing, and you know, letters going across here or something, by the time I get to here, this is dry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is like, it's not cold. It's not, it's right. not wet. Yep. Yeah, it's amazing. All right, what are you guys eating for lunch today? We have pizza waiting on us. We are ready. We are we ready. are ready for pizza. Um, I'm gonna do one more giveaway as Patty wraps that up. And um, make sure that you're like sharing and commenting, commenting. and subscribing mm -hmm. and all the things. Um, and tomorrow around 1 p.m. I will announce the um, grand prize giveaway winner. We will announce it on Facebook. So on Facebook you'll get a notification that there was a new post made. Now on YouTube we just make a comment with the winner's name and then we pin that to the top of the comment. So if you're joining us on YouTube, you're going to want to come back tomorrow and look at this post and see if you are the winner of a prize. So on Facebook, um, Anita Morin is going to be the winner of these stencils. There's two snowflake stencils and she's the winner because she's having pizza too. Yay! Um, <laughs> And then on YouTube, um, let's see here. Let me see who. Um, uh, 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 I'm going to do this one to Deb Bloomfield. Deb Bloomfield says that she has been with Patty for over 20 years. And so we have Deb. some we have some snowflakes coming to Deb too. Yay, Deb, thank you. Hey, guys, I wanted to point out one of the things that I just caught myself doing um, I'm an army brat. I've moved 40 times in my life, so like it's, it's a lot. Um, I've lived a lot of places, right? Which I have alluded to. This is a travel kind of project. Um, definitely have been in all the states. But I just put a little star right over here over Portland, Oregon, because two of our kids live there, and a lot of my best buds live there, and a lot of my painting buds mm -hmm. live there because that's where I started doing all of this. So um, I'm a little bit getting a little bit teared up. Bit teared up. <laughs> There's nice words from Deb and no, then you're part of the Stop. Don't be nice to me. <laughs> anyway, but I've lived in Hawaii. I've lived in Alaska. I've lived in like, like all the places. And so you could go in and you could be like, you know, right there. Mm -hmm. That's my that's my star, you know, and do the do the stuff. Such a great idea. Yeah, so you could really make it very personal. Okay, let's Absolutely. take a little peeky poo. I'm so excited to see this. Okay, you ready? Ready, 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 ready. Not enough stars. Not enough stars. Not enough stars. Okay, and I broke up a lot of stars, so mm -hmm. let's put yeah, the band agreed. back together. Okay. So, so what's happening with this that we're Let me not show it again. Yeah. is that when Patty pulls it over, there's a lot of stars between states, so they don't so they're broken. really read stars. Yeah, so I'm going to put a couple of... So then what I'll do, and this is what this lesson is for, right? Um, I'm going to go, and I was born in this state right here, so I'll go in and just be like, hello, welcome. And I almost bled under because I did not spend enough time on my paper towel. Um... Yeah, kids that were born over here. Yeah, we could just have fun with this. I'm 
we live here. Put one, can you, yeah, do one there, and then, um, where's, and that kind of peeps over into Rusty, too. <laughs> Rusty, too? Yeah, it peeps over where Rusty is, ah, too. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to, I think, just get some of these in the middle. Yeah, agree. And then maybe something here. We've got a grandkid that lives up there. Like, I'm having fun. Like, my family is like, if it wasn't for social media, the only thing I hate about that is the social media part. <laughs> but, yeah, let's go peeking. Okay, and then we need some love up here in these bigger states. So maybe I'll give a big old star up there. And then the other thing that you can do is you can make some soft and mm -hmm. some, some crispy. Yeah. So when you're looking at that, that'll make a little bit of dimension. And I actually don't love that. Now, this is where, this is exactly the problem Carrie was talking about. I used one of these stars faced in one of these directions mm -hmm. to do that thing. If you're going to lift the stencil to peek and see if you like it and you're unsure, don't move your stencil yeah. that's on top because you can't replace it. I could probably figure it out, but I'm going to jack it up. So what I could do if I did that, like I think this is a good lesson, is I could get just a little teeny bit of paint on a round and I could go in and make that just a little bit stronger um, and then blot it. Or if you're me yeah. and you're not as advanced as Patty when it comes to freehanding, you're going to grab the click eraser. Ooh, good idea. Oh, and you're very gonna brilliant. It, you're not going to put it in your mouth. You're going to put it in the water. <laughs> And then you're just going to erase that star. This star and is, then do it over. is dead to me. <laughs> you're dead to me. <laughs> Sad little star. Okay, so see how that made it all washy washy right there? Mm -hmm. And. <laughs> we got, oh, there in the Thank you. Thing. Normally I have a big pile of these all torn off, and I used them all up earlier. And as Pat also said, since we have the state. Since we have the United States down two, we could also just go back with our blue. Oh, good, good, good. good. And, and I'm going to have to because what I did. Okay, so this is really good. This is the click eraser. Mm -hmm. Greatest fixing tool ever. Um, but um, if you let the water sit there while you go and mm -hmm. search for your paper towels, yep. then it might soften the paint that I just put down, which was the blue. So we have a compound fixing issue, which is going to be super easy to fix. I'm gonna go into our paint, and that state's just gonna get some extra love. Okay? Yep. So we just tap, tap, tap. And he gone. Gone. Yay. Gone like yesterday. So that is all of the ways, friends, that you can fix mistakes in a two minute video. <laughs> I know, right? Ta -da! All right, so I think that next Tuesday, right here, right live. Yep, and be sure be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, guys. This Crackle series is love it. Yeah. top notch. Right.